Welcome everyone to the first ever Nelson Mandela University Faculty of Health Sciences Open Day webinar. My name is Ms. Nati Nelani and I am the Faculty of Health Sciences Success Coach. I am also alumni of the university and a social work graduate within the Faculty of Health Sciences. Just to give you an overall view of my experiences within the faculty and the university as a whole, I must say that I was in a very complex decision in deciding, do I leave home? Do I study close to home? Because I am from Port Elizabeth. And I found that it was much easier for me to stay close to home um, as I needed my family support. Also being closer to university also assisted me in some way. But after some time having started my first year, I realized that no matter where you come from, it's easy for you to actually just adjust into a university like Nelson Mandela University that has so many resources to assist you as a new student and help you adjust easily into your first year. Well, right now I would like to share the Faculty of Health Sciences, different schools and our qualifications. The first school is the Clinical Care and Medical Sciences School. That is emergency care, emergency medical care, sorry, medical laboratory science, nursing science, pharmacy, and radiography. Our second school is our behavioral and lifestyle sciences school that has dietetics, environmental health, human movement science, psychology, as well as social development professions. And we have a new school coming up next year, and that will be our school of medicine. All right, so just to give you an overall view of what we as a university offer our students in their first year of entering Nelson Mandela University within our faculty. We have myself as a success coach. I'm here to assist students adjust into their academics through academic planning, as well as offering them different workshops to help them with their self-esteem, um, which also helps them with their image of self, as well as helping them with self-awareness. As you know, you might be coming from matric straight into university, or you might be a mature student being in the midst of students that are directly straight out of matric. And you might want to try and find yourself in the space that you're in at the moment. That's where I come in. I also assist you with career guidance, as well as assisting you with anything that range, ranges from financial aid, um, accommodation, and also being able to have you settled into the faculty in order for you to solely concentrate on your academics. At the end of our webinar, we will have 15, sorry, 10 to 15 minutes for questions and answers that you might want to ask any of our directors and colleagues. So feel free to just type any questions in our chat box inside and we'll be able to assist you at the end. I hope you enjoy and welcome to our webinar. I'm going to hand over to our director of our Behavioral and Life Science School, Lifestyle Science School, uh, Professor Sorgi. Professor Sorgi, over to you. Thank you, Nati, for that wonderful introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zolega Sorgi, the director of the School of Behavioral and Lifestyle Sciences. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'd like to introduce you to my school. Before I do that, just to say to you that this school contributes towards understanding human behavior. It enhances health and well being of individuals, communities, as well as societies. Allow me to then fetch my presentation so that I can share with you. So, within the school, we have about five departments we have human nutrition and dietetics. This department aims to help and inspire people to live better. The second department is environmental health. So for environmental health, prevention is better than cure. So if you're keen on working in, in, in terms of looking at environmental factors that causes illnesses, then environmental health is for you. Human movement science. They aim to improve quality of life through human movement. 
psychology. Psychology aims to transform every aspect of life and those that you interact with. And lastly, we have social development professions. Let me now take you through to each of these departments in terms of the degree that is offered. In the Department of Human Nutrition and Dietetics, we have an undergraduate degree, namely BSc Dietetics. It has entry requirements. For instance, a candidate interested in studying BSc Dietetics would need to meet the minimum statutory NSC requirements and have a score, an applicant score of 390 with a 60% pass mark in mathematics and physical sciences. The department also offers postgraduate programs in dietetics, food nutrition and wellness studies. There are four main pillars in education and work of a dietitian. So you get dietitians who are working within therapeutic nutrition as part of a curative health team. You also get dietetics who are working within communities because the focus is on educating and supporting communities about healthy lifestyles. Now you will agree with me with COVID-19 that has made it possible for us to focus a lot on, on, on food and nutrition as well as healthy lifestyles. And then one can also be involved in research so that you can be able to contribute towards finding solutions to nutrition problems. The second department, Environmental Health, offers a four-year Bachelor of Environmental Health. Environmental Health Specialists are found in various governmental organizations such as local government as well as private industries. The scope of practice it would include water quality, for instance, waste management, as well as surveillance and prevention of communicable diseases. So if you're interested in studying Bachelor of Environmental Health, you will then need to have an applicant score of 390 with 50% for mathematics, physical sciences and life sciences. Department of Human Movement Science is the one that aims to improve quality of life through improvement. We have three career study fields within this department. We have Bachelor of Health of Human Movement Science, which is a three year qualification. We have Diploma in Sport Management, which is also a three year qualification. And we have a four year degree in Bachelor of Health Sciences Biokinetics. For a candidate who's interested in studying Bachelor of Human Movement Science, which is a three year qualification, you need a total applicant score of 350. That is if you've done maths in school and you, you, you manage to get a 45% pass mark. However, if you've done maths literacy with a 65% pass, you need a total of 365. Diploma in Sports Management, which is a three year qualification, allows you to also practice as a sports scientist and sports manager. Now note that all of these qualifications do allow you to register and practice as a sports scientist, sports manager and a biokineticist. Sports management, you need to have an applicant score of 330 if you've done maths in school with a 40% pass. However, if you've done maths literacy in high school and uh, you've passed it by 60%, then you need a total of applicant score of 345. Lastly, within this department, the four-year qualification, you need to have an, AP, an AS score of 370 if you've done maths, as well as um, you need to have a 50% pass mark in maths and life sciences. However, if you've done maths literacy, then it means you, have, you need to have a total of 385. For each of these programs that I've, I've indicated to you, 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 there is a component of clinical platform or work integrated learning. The fourth department is the Department of Psychology. Psychology aims to transform people. It's about understanding the way people behave and the way they, 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 the reasons behind their behaviors. 
So in psychology, when you can apply, there is a three-year undergraduate qualification, which is a Bachelor of Psychology, that allows you to study further towards reaching your, your dream of becoming a psychologist. The undergraduate qualification, the three-year undergraduate qualification does not necessarily qualify you as a psychologist. However, to work, to work towards your dream of becoming a psychologist, you will then need to apply for honours, uh, BA honours in psychology. There is a selection process for that. And once you successfully complete your BA honours in psychology, then you can be able to further your studies by applying for the master's programmes like clinical psychology, counselling psychology and research psychology. And there, are, there is a selection process for that. Please note, currently as it stands, once you successfully uh, complete your second year, you can also branch through to the stream of BSci counselling psychology, which you apply for and you do it from your third year as well as fourth year. The Bachelor of the BSci counselling psychology enables you to be a registered counsellor. It is an equivalence to the Honours Bachelor of Psychology and it also allows you to be able to to enter onto the postgraduate qualifications that will take you to being registered as a psychologist. The entry requirements will be posted on our departmental websites as well as the faculty websites. Please note that psychologists are found in various sectors. They work within the government sector, they work in private practice, especially if you've completed your postgraduate qualifications, you are, you are able to register within a professional board as a psychologist, and then you can open up your private practice, you can work within the school as well as government, as well as in industry. The last department that I would like to introduce you to is social work. Now, social work is concerned with issues of social justice and human rights. If you want to be an agent of change, social work is for you. It is a four-year degree. It enables you to register with the professional board. The entry requirements uh, will be posted on the departmental website, but similar to psychology, social work offers postgraduate qualifications that allows you to work within a private practice. Social workers are also employed in various sectors. They work in government sectors from social development, um, Department of Social Development, and the, you find social workers within the health sector as well. They work in hospitals and primary health care clinics. They also work within schools and correctional facilities as well as non-profit organizations. For more information in terms of the entry requirements as well as other additional information that you require about the programs that are offered within the school, please feel free to consult the departmental website as well as faculty website. I now give hand over to Professor Ilza Trute, who will be introducing you to her school. Thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ilza Trute. I am the director of the School of Clinical Care and Medicinal Sciences at Nelson Mandela University and I am privileged tonight to take you on a short tour through this very exciting and growing school in our faculty. I'm going to share a short presentation with you. In the School of Clinical Care and Medicinal Sciences, there are five different, um, there are five different departments I just want to get to my presentation. There are five different departments, emergency medical care, medical laboratory science, nursing science, pharmacy and radiography. All five departments involve the clinical training of students. Clinical training is very special because it is instruction um, providing direct patient care in a healthcare or related setting. So in all five departments, there are um, work integrated learning. Before students are placed in the work environment, they first practice their skills in simulation labs or in clinical labs on campus. And thereafter they are 
um, they are performing the activities under supervision in the in the clinical environment, which makes these all five uh, all five departments very close to real to the real life setting. All five departments are also the practitioners are governed by medical um, by professional boards, and there's a formal registration for all the um, uh, the uh, specialist in um, the uh, in these fields. Emergency medical care, our first department that I want to introduce to you, and I'm urging you to look at the website of each department for more information, also for the admission requirements. Emergency medical care offers a BEMC degree. Our emergency care practitioners say to us it is a tough but rewarding career providing emergency medical care and rescue services to those most in need. There are different, um, different areas that they are exposed to in their undergraduate training and also after they have qualified, there are various career opportunities. In the training, the following, for example, are covered. Intensive care units, adult pediatric neonatal, neurological and cardiac, accident and emergency units, obstetric and gynecological units, clinics and primary health care, surgical theatres and in pre-hospital emergency medical services. If I look at these practitioners in our faculty and our students, the one word that comes to mind is resilience. They say they can cope with anything because they are used to work in with crisis at accident scenes um, in ICUs. So that is our first department. The second department, medical laboratory science, they offer a B um, HSC degree in medical laboratory science. These scientists are employed in laboratory diagnostic services and they are also able to successfully undertake research. I think many of you know that these laboratory scientists are at the moment playing a critical role um, also in uh, fighting the COVID pandemic. Um, our medical laboratory scientists by ident they identify the nature of an illness and infectious microorganisms that may be responsible for the uh, patient's disease. They analyze blood, urine, tissue samples and other bodily fluids. Their laboratory um, is the laboratory full of microscopes where they, where they are doing um, analytical work. There are five main disciplines in medical laboratory science, clinical chemistry, cytology, hematology, histology and microbiology. Our students are placed at accredited training laboratories in the Eastern Cape for their work integrated learning. They are our analytical students. Our nursing science department, our third department, they offer a Bachelor of Nursing degree. They say to us it is a profession for the caring of people. And um, I think you will agree with me, the current pandemic is an illustration of the important role of nurse practitioners next to the patient's, uh, patient bed and also next to the medical practitioner. The programs are designed so that graduates are independent and safe practitioners. They are practicing in a sensitive manner towards humankind. Nursing science have different areas of specialization, general nursing science, primary health care, mental health care and midwifery. They use up to date technology both um, in the, the, the training of um, on campus, the theory, but also practical skills and they have an amazing simulation lab. Students are registered with the South African Nursing Council and um, the B curl degree is being phased out and it is replaced with a brand new program. It's a four year qualification like all the other degrees as well in the school, um, except that nursing also has a five year extended program. These are our caring professionals. Our fourth department is our pharmacy department. Pharmacists are experts in medicine, in the design, development, formulation, up to where the actual medicine is placed on the shelf in the pharmacy and where the pharmacist is dispensing it. 
Um, clinical pharmacy um, has become one of the strengths of the pharmacy school at Nelson Mandela University, and it is also an area that is fast growing in South Africa. Pharmacy is a four year degree. It takes six years to register as a pharmacist with the South African Pharmacy Council, and there are various career prospects. It's a very much a generalized degree and um, there are many career options for pharmacists. Uh, our pharmacists are scientific and patient centered individuals. Radiography, um, our fifth department, they offer a BRAD degree. There are different um, uh, focus areas in radiography. At Nelson Mandela University, we focus on diagnostic radiography. Um, these radiographers produce high quality radiographic images to assist medical practitioners to describe, diagnose, monitor and treat a patient's illness and injury. And I think you can see from the pictures how their laboratory looks like. So for all five hour departments in the school, the laboratories look different, but there's one common denominator. It is the human being and it is the healthcare of that human being and the caring nature. Radiographers have a strong scientific background. They use highly um, developed and very complicated um, machinery uh, equipment to, to take radiographic images that which they then share with healthcare professionals to assist in the treatment diagnosis and treatment of um, patients. So we say technology and interpersonal skills very important for our um, diagnostic radiographers. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the very first step towards success in any occupation is to become interested in it, to develop a passion for what you want to do because you're going to spend your life, hopefully your life, um, your career in that profession. You are very welcome to visit um, our website. You are also welcome to contact us um, if you want to discuss with us in more detail the different career opportunities. I hope I've inspired some of you this evening um, to come and join our wonderful School of Clinical Care and Medicinal Sciences at Nelson Mandela University. With that, I'm going to hand over to Professor Nanette Smith, our Director of Learning and Teaching. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Prof. Trita, for that introduction. I am Prof. Nanette Smith, the Acting Director for Learning and Teaching in our faculty. And I will um, now share with you some of the learning and teaching that we do in our faculty and how we actually support our students um, to make sure that they will make a success of their chosen um, career. We have various uh, supporting uh, literacies and developments and programs within the faculty. The first one is uh, some academic literacies. We have a first year success program and I will elaborate on that a little bit later. We also have writing literacies where we prepare the student to be able to write scientifically and how to do the different assignments because we are very much aware that 80% of our students are not English first language speakers. We also have um, a life skills management uh, program where we assist the students um, to manage their time and we also introduce them to different study methods. Then um, there's some supplemental instruction that we offer to students and that is usually a more senior student that will assist you in a specific module. If you not um, 
on campus. Then we have the electronic peer assisted learning where we also have tutors that will then assist um, the student in that uh, perspective. And then also some seminars that we have on the different keys to being a successful student. In the first year, there's also um, monitoring and development programs, as well as some in-class uh, presentations to assist students. Um, as you heard earlier this evening, um, our student success coach introduced um, this webinar and each faculty has their own a student a success coach. We're very fortunate in this faculty. We have two of them. The one specifically focused on uh, first years, and then we have another one, Nati, that will provide support to individual students requiring assistance in becoming more successful at the university across the various sectors. Then we have our Fountain of Student Wellness, and this is to make sure that we provide the students with support, guidance and professional counselling that contribute to their holistic student success and to make sure that we achieve the desired Nelson Mandela University attributes of a graduate. To come back to the first year success a program at uh, the university. Um, this program specifically focus on helping the first year student to make a successful transition from school to university. Each first year student will be assigned a specific um, success group where you will join with fellow students in the specific course that you are following. And then each student will have a specific first year success buddy uh, that is a senior student in your program assigned to you that will assist you with the various uh, aspects of being a student. In this faculty, we focus on technology-enabled learning. We harness the full potential of modern technology. And fortunately, we have been doing this uh, for the last few years because this became very important now during the COVID-19 outbreak. We have a digital learning platform called Moodle that is fully online and students can ex access lectures, course notes, uh, assessments and some tutorials to support them in their learning. And then also we have an internal video platform, the Mandela UniTube, that exposes the students to the different aspects of um, our university life. There's always the question about technology and technology on campus. All five our uh, campuses have Wi-Fi uh, throughout the campus and the residences. Also our off-campus residences that's accredited have Wi-Fi for students to use. And then on campus and in the, uh, the residences, we have computer laboratories for students to access computers and some of them are open for 24 hours. More specific to our faculty, we believe in interactive education and we are very fortunate to have the first anatomage table in the country. That is a virtual anatomy dissecting table. So instead of using a cadaver, our first year students will use um, this 
uh, dissection table. Then we also have simulation laboratories, and in those laboratories, the students will actually practice on mannequins to take blood pressure, etc., before they will be exposed to patients. And um, we also have simulation type laboratories being utilized by the psychology students. Um, etc. Uh, we are planning on launching the virtual academy for the faculty, uh, which will give students access to fully online courses as well. I hope this has uh, given you some insight into how we will support students in the learning journey at this university. I now hand over to Prof. Joanne Naidu. Good evening, everyone. I am Professor Joanne Naidu and the Director of the Health Sciences Research Portfolio in the Faculty. As we come towards the end of tonight's program, I am sure you all are very excited about the possibilities that awaits you at our faculty next year. Allow me now to take a few moments to share with you some of our research within the faculty. Similar to our university's tagline to change the world, research is the vehicle that enables us and our healthcare professionals to change the world. All of our undergraduate programs have a strong thread of research, and this allows especially our undergrad students to further deepen their curiosity about health and sharpen how they see or identify health problems. The research within the programs also equips them with the relevant skills to find meaningful solutions to the identified health problems. And in this way, we are consistently working towards developing new information and changing our practice to be current and relevant based on evidence. And as you embark on your journey with us in the faculty, you will start to see that we have a strong emphasis on evidence-based healthcare. On this note, let me share with you a glimpse of our faculty's research footprint and how our undergraduate students are involved in research. The faculty is home to numerous leading health science researchers who are recognized both nationally and internationally. And our research reflects the specific healthcare problems of the Eastern Cape, of South Africa, and of the African continent. And this is aligned with the Sustainable Development Goals and are reflected in many projects across our departments. Allow me now to share with you briefly just two such projects. And that is the Kasibantu Research Project, which is a school-based program focusing on physical education and healthy active living among school children and teachers. And then we also have the WASH Project that focuses on water, sanitation and hygiene, especially among early childhood development centers and aims towards creating safe and healthy environments. These are just but two examples that demonstrates our research footprint. And I encourage you to please read more about our research through the university's research webpage, and the details are reflected on your screen. In the undergraduate program, our students participate in group research where they work in diverse teams on research that range from laboratory-based clinical research, community health research, where students work directly with our local communities, and organizational research with other healthcare workers 
in healthcare settings such as hospitals and clinics. The research projects are embedded in the clinical practical experience of all of the programs in the faculty. And this allows the students to have a meaningful fit between the research and their clinical experience. At the end of the at, at the end of the program, our graduates complete with a greater understanding of their problem solving skills, greater critical thinking skills, and also an increased proficiency on the project management abilities. And at our yearly annual faculty research conference, our undergrad students have an opportunity to showcase their research findings, network with clinical practice partners, and have the opportunity to explore further engagement on their research track. This strong strand of the research being infused in our programs has carried through in how our graduates have navigated in their respective career pathing. Many of our graduates have taken on paths that have enabled them to specialize in clinical areas and to further build their knowledge through a master's and even a PhD qualification. Some of our graduate students, through harnessing the research skills that they have uh, received within the programs, have gone on to take employment in research institutes and knowledge translation units. Here our graduates work as part of large research teams in developing new knowledge in various aspects of health, such as policy, consumer research and clinical research. And lastly, the research embeddedness within our programs have also enabled our graduates to pursue careers within education and academic institutions. And as I end, our emphasis of research within our program does provide our graduates to make a meaningful difference in our society and therefore enabling them to change the world. On this note, I would like to introduce you to Professor Figile Nomvete, who is the director of our medical program. Thank you, uh, Joanne. Um, good evening, prospective students, parents, and all those that are, have joined us this evening. It is indeed a great pleasure to introduce you to the newest program Nelson Mandela University will be offering. I am Figile Nomvete. I am an internist physician and a gastroenterologist who is the director of the medical program. This program is soon to open for applications for the MBCHP degree next year. So following a recent accreditation, which we've received from the Health Professions Council of South Africa, we are then planning on to open the applications towards the study of the Bachelors of Medicine and Surgery. We will be the 10th medical school in the Republic of South Africa. And due to the amount of information that needs to be shared with you there at home, there is a separate webinar that will be planned for the new medical school. And all that relates to the medical school, including its program, will be discussed in this webinar. It is indeed an exciting development and you will all you most invited to stay alert, looking out for the webinar advert, which shall be coming in both our website as well as be published in various uh, social media. I invite you to send any questions that you may have concerning the medical school and the, how you're going to apply and what is needed for you to, to have a better chance of, um, to have a better chance of um, enter into the medical school by sending all the inquiries to the email address that is currently being displayed on your screen. 
It is a fairly easy address to remember. It is medical school at Mandela dot AC. It is meant to be an AC dot ZA. So the medical school will reply to you as we have been doing thus far for all the inquiries that have been coming through to us. So please allow me to hand you over to Professor Delena van Royen, who will provide us with some concluding remarks and facilitate the session further. She is the Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences in the Nelson Mandela University. Thank you and have a good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Dalena van Rooyen, and as you heard uh, Prof. Akili introduced me, I'm the Vice Dean or Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences. And it's really a great pleasure to welcome all of you again, but also on behalf of our Executive Dean, Prof. Lungili Pepeta, that unfortunately couldn't join us tonight, but are with us most definitely in spirit. Um, this section of the evening is actually quite exciting because looking at all the questions that you've posted, I can see that there's a lot of interest in our programs in health sciences. So one question that many of you actually asked and are at different ways and are concerned about is the fact that you know and you've heard from our director colleagues that you'll do some clinical work in hospitals and in, cl and in clinics um, and in different sites. And considering the current pandemic, you want to know what will the faculty do to assist and support you as students having to work there? So I think I'm going to ask our resident um, physician, medical specialist perhaps to answer that question for us. Prof. Akile, do you mind taking that question? Thank you. Th thank you very much, uh, Prof. and Royan. Uh, in indeed, it's a uh, it's it's uh, times of anxiety to be in the clinical field with the current um, SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, pandemic. But all the necessary precautions, as regulated by the Department of Health and the Department of Higher Education and Training, are followed by the Nelson Mandela University. Our students are provided with the personal protective equipment, and this is always tailored to suit whatever field they are being, tra they are being trained in the clinical platform. We must also just uh, hasten to point out that together with our stakeholders in the various uh, training centers, in the various clinics and hospitals, the students I have a reduced exposure to the high risk wards or the high risk units within those centers. So just in summary, the medical, the, the, the Faculty of Health Sciences has taken the initiative to make sure that the students are protected and will continue to do so. And also we certainly do welcome and do enjoy the support from the uh, Eastern Cape Department of Health where we place our students in, in the way that they restratify the areas of training and we, we expose our students to minimum risk with the COVID virus. It is also important to appreciate that even before the COVID virus uh, pandemic, the issues of infections and hospital associated problems were appreciated and the Faculty of Health Sciences under the Nelson Mandela University has been doing its part to make sure that we minimize exposure to all these risks. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you, Prof. Namveti, for that uh, comprehensive answer. The following question is actually a two-part question, and um, I think our youngest member of the panel, Nati, will be best to answer this question. Nati, quite a few of the, the candidates or the prospective students tonight asked, um, they want to just know what advice will you give them if they study health sciences at a university? What advice would you give them as somebody who have walked that road? And then secondly, um, what is the most important support that is available especially for first year students at the university that you would guide students to consider. Thanks, Nati. 
Thank you so much, Prof. Um, with regards to studying health sciences um, at our university, the first advice that I'd like to give students is for them to know their departmental perspectives very well. Um, a lot of students come into the qualification not knowing um, what is needed of their first year. So students often just have the notion that they have the APS points to get into the qualification and they're going to lectures every day. But at the end of the year, if they you know, fail one module and um, the following year when they register, you know, you'll find out that there's been a confusion. The module that they failed will not allow them to go fully into second year. So, you know, once a student enters into their first year, being very familiar with their departmental um, perspectives is usually the first point that I would advise a student. Also, um, secondly, with regards to academics, planning your, your, your learning outcomes prior to entering a lecture is usually what I would advise a student. Um, walking into a lecture more with questions rather than walking in with a blank slate and listening and just, you know, assuming that you're going to understand everything. Um, and with regards to, sorry Prof, what's your second question again? <laughs> Um, uh, so, uh, with regards to advising students with life around campus. Nati, it's just the students want to know what is the most important piece of advice around support that they have to consider um, that you would give them, not only as a success coach, but also as a, a student that lived and walked the road. Okay, as a success, a success coach, um, the one piece of advice I'd like to give students is for them to focus on their academics, but as well as give themselves time to actually create friendships. Um, it's very difficult to get through a qualification without getting assistance from your peers. You might find that you have one half of the information for that particular module and someone else in the class has the other half and, you know, meeting together halfway to assist each other is um, one of the starting points that students can actually use. And that's why the university also has, um, you know, the how to buddies, which are a part of orientation, getting a senior student within that department, linking you into groups in your first year group and also making sure that you're all familiar with, with each other in your first years uh, as first years in order for you guys to know that you have someone to go to. Also our departments have mentorship programs and SIs so you will know at least one senior student that you can go to in order for you to request assistance. So we have enough support within our faculty and the university also has a student counseling center that will be able to assist students with regards to their emotional intelligence, mental health, as well as their emotional well-being. So looking from the academic side, students are pretty much well resourced within our faculty with myself and the senior um, students, as well as from the university and the institution's resource side, we have enough support from our student counseling centre, as well as our centre for teaching and learning. Thanks, Prof. Thank you, Nati, for that comprehensive answer as well. Much appreciated. I'm now going to speak to uh, Prof. Sorgi, Prof. Zuleka Sorgi from the School of Behavior and Lifestyle Sciences. One of the uh, prospective students asked the following. Social work is offered by a number of universities in South Africa and is always full each academic year. Are there enough job opportunities in the country for so many social workers? So there's an issue around um, when I've finished my studies, will there be um, adequate places for these students to be placed? Thanks, Prof. Sorgi. Thank you, Prof, for the question and thank you for the individual who asked that question. Yes, there are opportunities to practice as a social worker. However, currently, as we are all aware, the NGO sector, which takes on most of our students, is constrained in terms of resources, financial resources. So in order for, for, for us to, to advocate um, for the students in terms of allowing them to find employment opportunities, we have started placing students within schools because we feel that once we place them within schools and these other non-traditional social work um, organizations or agencies, 
then that creates opportunities for, for, for employment for these students. For instance, we started placing them within schools, within employee assistance and wellness programs, as well as other department of, of, of other government departments such as agriculture. We're in the process now of, of, of working with the health and welfare center in terms of enabling students to, to, to be placed within these other environments in an extended um, internship so that they can be able to open up employment opportunities. So yes, currently there are constraints, but those constraints do not mean that there are no employment opportunities. Thanks, Prof. Thank you very much, Prof Sorji, for the answer. And yet, and the next question, Prof Smith, I'm going to put forward to you because um, before you were the Director of Learning and Teaching, you also were the Director of Clinical Care and Medicinal Sciences. So between you and Prof uh, Ilze, the, uh, there's a very interesting question about emergency medical care and it reads, if I study emergency medical care, am I going to ride in an ambulance all day, every day? So, Prof. Smith, do you want to start us off? I can elaborate a little bit on that. No, definitely not. There's other rescue opportunities as well. And as Prof. Trita pointed out earlier on, uh, there's various specialities within emergency medical care. Uh, the rescue uh, units in the Eastern Cape uh, also might take you into the mountains. We do have some mountains in the Eastern Cape as well. Um, and you might go out to sea, uh, might do some rescue in rivers as well. So no, definitely not. Our students are also uh, trained in firefighting. So there's a uh, various opportunities for students not only to ride in the back of uh, ambulance as such but at any rescue scene to actually assist and to make sure that the patient in the end will be transported to the hospital but uh, very very important and maybe Prof Nombeta can elaborate on that it is then the responsibility of the emergency medical care uh, practitioner to hand over the patient to the emergency doctor uh, at the hospital. Thank you. Thank you, Prof Smith. I actually think you you answered that uh, adequately. I don't think we need to to go to the because there's so many other questions and we have limited time, but thank you very much. I'm going to ask Prof Joanne Naidu to take the following question um, because, uh, you know, in a previous life before she was actually our director of research, she was actually from the nursing department, so she will always be a, a nurse, a professional nurse at heart. So, Prof uh, Naidu, uh, there's a question around how is the practical training for nursing science students going to be next year, considering the pandemic? What are you going to do with the clinical training? And also, is it the university's responsibility to arrange clinical training for its students? Thank you, Prof Naidu. Thank you for that question. Um, in terms of the curriculum for next year, I'm going to take it in two parts, specifically in terms of our institution. And as Prof Trutter has noted, um, the Department of Nursing Science, in fact, the country as a whole, is under the process of recurriculating. And so we have an exciting opportunity in that our institution is accredited to offer a new program. And what this means is that the program is going to have a stronger emphasis on community-based nursing uh, in, in the sense that uh, our disciplines within, embedded within nursing science is going to have a stronger focus on 
health promotion, disease prevention within community spaces. In terms of the COVID pandemic, I think we all can recognize the uncertainties that this has brought. Um, and in terms of clinical placements and clinical learning, this is where Prof Smith alluded to the exciting technologies that our faculty is engaged with. So learning and clinical learning occurs also within simulated spaces. And the Department of Nursing Science is especially privileged to have robust, high fidelity simulation spaces. So that is one aspect of the clinical learning that still is achieved and is assessed within the program. And work integrated learning that is embedded within the program is still coordinated by the Department of Nursing Science uh, under the auspices of the university to ensure that our students are placed in safe learning spaces. So um, there is uh, uh, uncertainty in terms of how that is happening. And even now currently, our candidates within the nursing program are still engaging with clinical learning um, and it is still being done in a regulated manner um, such that it is safe both for the patient as well as for the student. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof Naidu, for, for that answer. Very clear and um, comprehensive. I now want to ask Prof Treater if she could assist us um, with the following question as a pharmacist. Um, what else can I do to gain entry to your pharmacy degree if it's already full? Should I do a BSc degree and then transfer the next year? What advice can you give me to get into the pharmacy degree? Thank you, Prof Treater. Thank you very much for the question. Um, that is an interesting question. I think the first, uh, my first response will be make sure that you you have the um, uh, entrance requirements, and then secondly, make sure that your marks are as high as possible because it is uh, it is a quite a difficult degree to be accepted into. Um, there are limited spaces. Um, the department is growing at the moment. So my advice will be um, uh, make sure that your marks are very, very good. Um, make sure that you have the correct subjects and then um, a, any basic um, a scientific degree will definitely assist you. But you must remember that from first year we are focused on um, on pharmacy as a profession. So from first year, there are uh, modules that are pharmacy specific. So it is very difficult to get entry into second year. You will have to start from first year and follow through the four years. Um, I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you, Prof Trita. Certainly does. And then a, a very interesting one. We're running out of time. There's just so many questions. But Prof Sorgi, this is a question that I'm going to put to you. Um, many of the candidates, possible prospective candidates, are wondering about, you had quite a complex slide when you explain the different pathways in the psychology program. There's just a question, how do I become a psychologist? Can you please assist us with that? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Prof. Um, Firstly, in, it's in terms of you successfully completing your undergraduate qualification. That on its own does not um, make you a, a, a psychologist, but it takes you closer to your, your dream, your goal of becoming a psychologist. However, once you successfully complete either your BA honours in psychology or your, your, your B psych counselling, your fourth year degree, you are able to articulate or you are able to apply for the master's degrees in psychology. And once you co successfully complete the master's degree in psychology, then you are able to register as a psychologist, depending on the stream that you have selected. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Soji. Unfortunately, if you look at the clock, it's seven o'clock on the dot. And unfortunately, we have to wrap, wrap up this Q&A section. 
However, I want to please urge all our prospective students to visit the faculty website and all the contact details, as my colleagues have indicated before, you will find on the faculty of, web, uh, of the faculty's website, as well as all, all the other um, social media platforms. So please, you will also find the email addresses of all the HODs and the colleagues that you met tonight that you can actually send emails and further questions to. And I want to urge you, please, to use that opportunity. But on that note, I also want to take to thank my colleagues for their participation tonight and, um, you know, for bearing with this very brand new way of running an open day. It was quite um, a big planning event and for all of us, and I want to thank you. But I sincerely want to, to thank the technical team that assisted the faculty to make this event a reality. We really appreciate all your hard work behind the scenes and especially your patience with all the questions. And then lastly, to all our prospective students and parents, thank you for joining the faculty this evening. And I want to assure you, one of the best choices and decisions that you will ever make in your life is to join the health sciences family at Nelson Mandela University. Our staff, is fully committed to providing only the best quality learning experiences to all their students. Enjoy the rest of your evening and good night. <laughs>